welcome. And some of you may have been joining uh, us for the last one or two of these workshops, and I want to welcome you as well. And I ask you to um, share a little bit about yourself. So folks, um, let us know where you, who you are and why you're calling in from. Uh, we are going to be hanging on. We have about um, 86 folks that have already joined us. And um, we're going to hang on for another minute or two to see if we can um, collect a few others and make and welcome them into the training. So I uh, appreciate folks coming. Um, Kyle from Portland, Oregon, who's thinking about hosting uh, or joining a lobbying event. Drew from Houston, uh, Dave from Baltimore. I wanna also remind people if you are able to uh, mute your phones uh, with the mute button there. Justin from Iowa, Kelly from Laramie, Wyoming. Thank you for joining. Uh, Elizabeth from Buffalo. So many folks from all over the place. Deanna from Honolulu, uh, Chris from Lake County in Northern California, Mary Beth, Deb, Maggie, Sheila from Santa Rosa, California. We're so grateful to have people coming to these trainings uh, virtually from all over the country. So thank you very much um, for joining. We have such important work and we're really grateful to you for joining tonight for our training on storytelling to build power and connection. So uh, we're just gonna wait another minute. And um, while we're doing that, um, I wanted to welcome you uh, to use the chat, which so many of you are already doing. Um, we are going to keep the chat open um, as much as we can over the course of the evening. Um, and use it to be able to ask for your participation in the training tonight. Um, we want to be able to learn with you and engage you. Um, and so to do that, uh, we are going to ask you to join us in some community agreements. Um, so tonight we're going to be working to um, be together in this space and engage with kindness. Um, in particular, we are going to um, both engage and build community with kindness, and then ensure that we are calling um, out racism, misogyny, xenophobia, and hate. Those things will not be tolerated. Um, and we're gonna be asking you to join us and being able to um, be mindful of how you're showing up and then um, know that we have some chat moderators that will be helping us to um, ensure that we are um, supporting the learning and calling those things in. Um, and if necessary, kind of letting people know when that's not going to be, when they're, they're not being helpful and they're going to be asked to, to not participate. So that, of course, is not what we're hoping for. What we're hoping for is that you will fully participate and share um, over the course of the evening, in particular using um, plus plus to indicate that something resonates with you. Um, and uh, Um, and then we're also going to ask that you um, limit sidebar conversations and repetitive comments. Um, and uh, we are going to be sharing the PowerPoint presentation after this call, but we are not sharing the PowerPoint at this time. So I just want to let folks know that. Um, so. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and ask this to, uh, we have now 121 folks who've joined us on the call. If you are just joining and you didn't get a chance to share where you're calling from, where you, how you're joining us, um, please let us know where you're calling, where you're um, joining us from. So hello to Jim from Long Island. Uh, Jerick, I see you're on the phone. Um, Okay, I'm gonna ask us to um, move to the next slide. So thank you everyone for joining. Um, I see you, uh, Mark from Philadelphia and so many others. Um, this is the third in our summer training series. Uh, we are doing these every Tuesday in August. We have already um, gotten to share with you all um, climate justice, equity in the Sierra Club and a training on lobbying for change. The recordings for those trainings are available and we will share links to that in the chat. Um, and what we are uh, here tonight for is storytelling to build power and connection. 
And so um, how about we, and then we will have the, the next two trainings. We want you to be sure to sign up if you haven't done already. We have a great training plan for next week on creative activism, making your advocacy sparkle and shine. And then um, the last week of August, we're gonna be talking more about online activism and social media advocacy. So next slide, please be sure to um, sign up for those trainings if you haven't or access the recordings from the last uh, events. I wanna appreciate um, everyone who's joining uh, us tonight. We have some great speakers um, from around the country. Um, and we also have a fabulous support team. Um, and uh, our support team is here to ensure that everything runs smoothly in the back end um, and that folks are getting their the answers to their questions in the chat. Um, we are getting a lot of questions and we have a lot of things coming up. So just be patient. Um, and we will, and folks will be working to make sure that we get everything that you need. Um, all right, thank you. So the agenda for tonight, we're going to chat a little bit about our priorities, but then really dig into um, what are the elements of an effective story. Um, and we're going to walk through those elements and then give you a chance in a breakout room, um, which is optional to just start the very basics of thinking about what would be um, what would be included in your story and be able to hear from one another about what would be included in your stories. And then we're going to talk a little bit about applications and we'll close out. Um, okay, so let's move on to the next slide. I think that um, it's it's a part of our overarching story that the Sierra Club is an organization that believes in the power of people working together to make change happen. We work toward a just, equitable, and sustainable future built on a foundation of racial, economic, and gender equity where all people benefit from a healthy, thriving planet. So this is just a critical statement um, that can be included in your own thinking about how you'll share your story and how you're part of the work that the Sierra Club is doing in this moment. Um, if you haven't had a chance, I just want to um, let you know again that you can check out our great training on um, climate justice, equity, and um, this campaign. Um, there's a lot there that can help you to build in more elements of the values of equity, justice, inclusion into your story. And you'll see some great examples of stories there too. Next slide. I can't see any slides. Oh, hi. I just want to ask folks to once again be on mute. Oh, mute. Oh. Well, thank you. Um, I just want to appreciate once again that we have 136 folks on this call um, and just um, working to make sure that we both can um, hear from uh, all of our speakers and also um, working to ensure that our slides are. Um, we're not having those annotation marks. So thanks a lot for bearing with us. Um, so what are we here to talk about besides how to put together an effective public narrative? Um, we are here to ask you to join us this summer as we build our um, overarching campaign to move the Congress to build back Boulder um, and really to lean into um, and help deliver on the Sierra Club seven priorities here. I'm not gonna review these priorities. Again, we did a great job of covering a lot of these priorities in our lobbying training that was held last week. And I would ask that you take a look at the recordings from last week's uh, training to get more information on our priorities. But I do wanna pause here and just um, give you a minute to look at them yourself and just think in your mind, which one of these or, which, or any of these or all of these are you excited about? Which ones do you think that the Congress needs to move on this summer and into this fall in order to ensure that we are able to um, survive and thrive in this planet? So just wanna pause there, take a minute. Yeah, thanks for sharing that Kyle in the chat. So I see a few people are noticing that they're all critical. Uh, that's right. So thank you for joining us um, to talk more about um, how your story can be part of the change. So next slide. Uh, 
And with that, I want to um, turn it over to uh, a great uh, colleague and um, organizer from Illinois, Tassine, um, has shared with me some of her stories already, and I'm really excited to have her share with you a little bit more about how to how to put together your own effective public narrative. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Tassi Nayushi, her pronouns, and I'm a conservation organizer currently working on federal work at um, the Illinois chapter, um, and I'm also based in Chicago. Um, so thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, like I said, my name is Tassine, and um, I'm here today because I am very excited to advocate um, for the biggest and boldest climate bill our country has ever seen. Um, as you've heard from previous trainings for the first time in 10 years, um, we can actually make a difference, um, which is why I'm very excited um, to use my organizing skills to throw down behind equity, climate, jobs, and justice while we can. Um, it's all hands on deck, so let's get started. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so we are here today um, for a story of self-training and to build a linked narrative. And we'll get into that um, in the next couple of slides. But before we start, um, Laura, can you please read the quote um, that's on the slide? Yeah, so Marshall Gann says, because stories speak the language of emotion, the language of the heart, they teach us not only how we ought to act, but can and inspire in us with the courage to act. Wonderful, thank you so much. Um, so exactly what Mr. Gann said, um, we are gonna be talking about how our personal experiences um, can be used for a means of change. Uh, next slide. So, um, None of the greatest or even most terrible leaders of all time would have succeeded without building a powerful narrative, right? Um, storytelling is just a fundamental part of being human and what makes us human. They create authentic, meaningful connections, build relationships and communities and can inspire others to join um, you in taking action. Um, we're all storytellers, and while there is no one way to tell a story, um, this training is to provide you with certain tools you can use to build a linked narrative with the intention of amassing change at the political level. Um, as Marshall Gann says, stories speak the language of emotion and of the heart, and they can inspire and move even the emotions and hearts of people like politicians. Next slide. Um, so in order to build a linked narrative, um, we will be talking about a story of self, a story of us, and a story of now. Um, so to get started with a story of self, um, that is your introduction um, and it communicates who you are, your values, your experience, and why you do what you do. Um, when sharing a story of self or your personal story, you share a part of yourself with others that is real and authentic. It shows humanity, vulnerability, power, and most importantly, your stake or how your own story affects the issues you engage with politically, morally, ethically, philosophically, so on and so forth. Um, so these are just a couple of questions to help you brainstorm and generate your story of self. Um, how do you introduce yourself? Um, what language do you speak? What is your dream? What is the source of your motivation? Um, what is a challenge you faced? What choices did you make when confronted with the challenge? And what was the outcome? Um, if you have any ideas right now, feel free to share them in the chat. Um, I personally um, very much identify with being a conservation organizer. Um, and that is one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about this work. Um, I have a dream of um, doing our best to mitigate climate change. And um, I really see grassroots organizing as one of the most important ways we can do it. Uh, next slide. Um, so once you've established your story of self, your audience will have an idea of who you are and why you're choosing to speak in this moment, but why should they care, right? This is where the story of us comes in. A story of us communicates who we are, our shared values, our shared experiences, and why we do what we do. 
um, is telling a powerful story and direct story that invites others to join you in this community and works if people are able to identify with each other, the values that inspire them to act. So one way to talk with your politician is to bring the community they represent and the choices and values that community cares about into your story. The more specific you can be, the better. Um, some questions to help you brainstorm your story of us are thinking about who is your audience, right? Consider who you're talking to, um, the us in the space around you, to what values, experiences, or aspirations will you appeal to when you call on them to join you in action? What stories do you share that, it, that can express these values? Um, another question you can ask yourself is what communities do, you're, do you consider yourself a part of? Um, which can, communities do you connect with? Um, we are all a community here of Sierra Club volunteers right now. Um, we are all part of multiple us's, families, faiths, cultures, communities, organizations, nations, generations. How does that situate you to the us that you're speaking to? Um, another question um, you can ask yourself when thinking about the story of us is, how can you draw us, the public, into your story? A good way to do this is to reference something someone already said or brought up before. Use the name of people in the room or highlight specific moments that the community has encouraged together. Again, it's important to be specific as it will bring the room into your story and make your values our values. Um, an example of this is when I had a um, lobby meeting with um, Congressman um, Schneider. He has very much um, publicly made very bold statements about climate change, but hasn't um, acted in the way that we wanted him to act, um, as in be a champion for climate. And um, we, when we started the meeting, um, we reminded him of what he has publicly said and what he has publicly committed to um, when talking about climate, just so we could localize um, our fight and our struggle to his office specifically. Uh, next slide. Um, so now that you've brought yourself and your community into your story and your audience is invested, it's time to tell the story of now, um, which focuses on the challenge we are facing that requires action. The hope for that action and the choice we are calling upon others to make. It's not simply to call to be for or against something, but a call on others to join you and to take hopeful action. Um, a story of now is um, very much urgent and immediate. Um, those listening should come to care about what you are sharing, but also why they should care right now and how much time we have to act before it's too late. Um, one way um, you guys can do that right now is by um, bringing up this new UN report or talking about how um, losing either the House or the Senate in the midterms um, can affect um, this climate bill that we're all working towards to get passed. Um, it is rooted in the values you celebrate in your story of self. And um, the story of now is clear about a vision of the world as it will be if we fail to act. Um, the world as it could be if we do act and the action of each of us can take. Um, and so our story of now ends with a clear call to action or a concrete ask that can be completed with the resources folks will have wherever you are telling your story and continues to bring community and visibility. A lot of people are so excited to get to the end of their narrative that they forget to leave with a concrete ask. And in the context of meeting with politicians, for example, what happens is that politicians will try to distract you through small talk so they can leave before you get to your ask. Um, also, if they flat out say no, that is a really good organizing opportunity as well. It's good for social media. It's good for visibility for your ask and your organization. Um, getting that ask in is very, very important. Uh, next slide. Um, so when you combine the story of self, the story of us, and the story of now together, you create what we mentioned at the beginning of the presentation called a um, linked narrative. Some key points to take away is that your story or public narrative should incorporate uh, your personal stake, 
your values, your shared experiences, and most importantly, um, have a clear and reasonable call to action today. An ideal story brings us further into community together and creates safe spaces for most stories to be told. Uh, next slide. Um, so some final notes and tips. Um, public narrative requires learning a process, not writing a script. Each time you tell your story, you'll be changing and adapting it, such as adjusting to a different audience or locating yourself in a different context. It's a process that can only be learned by telling, listening, reflecting, and telling over and over and over again. Remember that there is no one way to tell a story. This framework is to help you get started. But if you find that um, this particular structure doesn't fit your own unique story, don't use it. Um, effective storytelling comes from the heart and our human emotions. So follow your heart and you'll be able to reach people. If you're either stuck or lost, think of moments in your life where you felt inspired, moved, or emotional, and reflect on what exactly lit those feelings inside you and why. Storytelling isn't just about expressing yourself or inspiring others, but also a reflective and reflexive process where you discover who you are and what makes you you. Um, don't be afraid to be vulnerable and bring your communities and your uniqueness out. And also remember to be kind to yourself through the process because um, what makes a story perfect is the fact that it's always growing. Uh, next slide. Um, so with that, um, we are going to be going into breakout rooms in a hot sec, um, but I did want to um, uplift our priorities once again. Um, the ones listed are um, very much what we will be advocating for in the next couple of weeks. And um, if you want to take a look at these real quick, um, that would be great. Next slide. Um, and just as a final reminder, um, we reviewed these group agreements um, in depth in our equity training uh, two weeks ago. If you want to know more about these, please go back and um, watch the recording from our equity training, which we dropped in the chat earlier. Uh, take a moment to read these and then add a plus sign in the chat if you agree to uphold these in our breakout rooms. Wonderful. Uh, next slide. Um, so while you are talking to your fellow uh, Sierra Club volunteers and organizers, um, just remember or chat about um, what brought you here today. Um, why do you care and what led you to care about it? Um, these are just some kind of guiding questions um, that will eventually help you um, write your own story of self. Was food security and the only um, I hey welcome back everyone I am going to pass it over to my colleague Sarah um, she is going to share her personal story um, about her stake in the movement. Um, and then um, I would like everyone to think about um, what stood out to you um, and what Sarah's story of self, us, and now was. Um, so feel free to just brainstorm in the chat while she's speaking. And um, I'll kick it off to you. Thanks, Tassine. Hi, y'all. My name is Sarah Dillon. Um, I use she, her pronouns, and I live in Lexington, Kentucky, which is on Shawnee, Cherokee, and Osage land. And though I live in the bluegrass now in Lexington, I am a proud hillbilly. I grew up and still identify as Appalachian. 
and I came into movement work. Um, I'm on staff with the, the Sierra Club now. I'm an organizing manager, but I came into the movement work in a similar moment about 13 or so years ago, uh, before I even knew what a community organizer was. Um, I moved to Kentucky in 2007, and my drinking water had been negatively impacted by mountaintop removal. I lived in a little town of 700 in the mountains, and a local mountaintop removal mine um, had put off a blast like right before I moved there that was so powerful that it fractured the municipal water wells um, where I was living. And at the time when I was still living there, I would often say that uh, my water was the color of weak tea. Um, I grew up among the hills in West Virginia, and some of my best memories from childhood are playing in the woods and being on the land and um, a part of the mountains. And I have this one memory that I always go back to of when I was a kid, I might have been eight or nine years old, of just sitting on the hillside right up at the tree line. And I remember it was fall, which is my favorite season, and the air is crisp. It's that time when you can smell the sunlight warming the fallen leaves. Um, and I just remember my back being up against a tree and just sitting there and just like looking out over the valley of the little holler that I lived in. And I just remember still that moment of connection to the land and the joy I felt. So back in 2007, when I drove to the little town in Eastern Kentucky for the first time and drove by a site where mountaintop removal um, had blown away a mountain, for coal, I felt that wound in my body, like that absence and that grief. And um, I wasn't driving, but I just remember driving down, um, riding down that road and um, just wept right there in the car. And I soon found a grassroots organization though that was working to stop mountaintop removal and I got active. I started attending meetings and rallies. I was trained by those organizers on how to host meetings and was out in the community doing that. And during that time for the first time, I got to go to Washington DC and I was supported by organizers to learn how to do grassroots lobbying and talk to Congress people and senators um, about a clean water bill. And while I was doing that, it was simultaneously enraging just seeing that power there. But it was also empowering because I got to share and my own story and I found my voice. So back then I would wear this big button. I was one of those activists that wore a big button that said, stop mountaintop removal. And at the time we had this um, sort of narrative framework that we used over and over that was problem, solution, action. And we thought we were doing really great because we had the solution in there, you know, that we were being solutions oriented, like that was how you were supposed to do it. Um, but at the time we were in the middle of this manufactured culture war, uh, the coal industry was putting millions and millions of dollars out on the airwaves to talk about the war on coal. And we soon learned through a training like this that was led by Marshall Gans um, in the organization I was in, um, that instead of starting with the story we wanted to stop, like when we did that, like we really shut down our neighbors, our community, like people had apathy or anger and would just walk away. So we learned this story of self, us, and now, and it created the kinds of emotions and the folks we were talking to, our listeners or our neighbors, that moved them to hope and listening and possibility. And that vulnerability that Tassine talked about earlier, like that helped create empathy. And so not, it's not that we didn't call out the problem, like we did, uh, we didn't, it's not that we didn't talk about oppression, but we, we did, we just knew to get there and to move people there with us. We had to start by talking about ourselves. And so for me, that meant I had to start talking about being a little girl from West Virginia who grew up loving the mountains and that I care about the future and all of our future. And I care about clean water and a future for our children and um, that we all care about what's gonna happen when coal is gone and that we have an opportunity right now to work together for that future. We would talk about the self, the us, the now, but we would still very directly and emphatically call out the problem. To have clean water, we have to stop coal companies from destroying our land. And so during that time, I shifted my story to start with story of self, us now, vision and values, um, the moment. And I did that as an individual, but we started doing that organizationally over and over with hundreds of people and thousands of people eventually, like a chorus of voices. Um, and when we showed up with what we cared about, and all of these things that we've been talking about in this story of self, we started to shift what was culturally and politically possible in the reason. Like we knew that we'd really done something when a local legis um, a decision maker switched from uh, talking about being a big coal booster, just saying, we can't cry over spilled milk anymore. We have to plan for the future together. Like we knew we were making progress when those um, local, that same county, the local leaders, 
following the leadership of grassroots folks, installed solar panels on the roof of the Kentucky Coal Mining Museum. We can go to the next slide. And I know I'm running a little bit over, but I'm gonna continue for just a little bit. Um, oh wait, I'm not on a slide, so that's okay. It's not a big deal. Um, and so I know that we're all here on this call because we believe in the power of stories, not just because we showed up for a training called Storytelling to Build Power and Connection, but because stories have shaped our lives along the way, have led us here. I mean, think about the time that stories have inspired you, have moved you to action, have angered you enough to fight for the right thing. And what if all of us here right now, over the next few weeks, as we're fighting for this bold, historical climate and democracy legislation. What if we each, there was about 150 of us here at the height of the call, on this call shared our story multiple times over the coming weeks. And then we joined our stories to those of our frontline partners who are leading the way and members of other organizations across the country who are also working towards the same vision and the tens and thousands of other Sierra Club members and supporters, what can we accomplish in these few weeks? I really do believe and the power of masses of people who don't need to use the perfect framing or the perfect messaging. We don't have to be eloquent every time, but that speaking up and speaking out and speaking from the heart and the reasons that we care over and over, just regular people over and over, over time, that that can shift the power. And I've seen it happen. Uh, we often talk about communications rather than narrative as like we have to, the thing we have to say to push a decision maker to do what we want. Um, what's the clever thing or the right fact or the right tweet that we have to use. But for me, I mean, that's important, but that's not how we build a powerful movement that will last for the long haul. Uh, that we have to bring more people in and more people join us because they relate to us. And we inspire others and ourselves to take bold and more powerful action over time when we hear the stories of other people. And like for me, that's the important part of this is like, yeah, learning how to lobby, but also how to build that people power through story and narrative. It's not the perfect tweets or the Facebook ads, it's our voices becoming our power. And so to wrap up, I want to ask you, in a minute, you're gonna hear about some opportunities. So which of those following storytelling opportunities are you going to do over the next coming weeks? What are you going to commit to? Please think about how you will contribute your voice to building our power and to make a commitment in this moment. Thanks. Thanks for sharing, Sarah. Um, I think one thing that stood out to me was um, when you invoked our Sierra Club community and mentioned how strong we are. We are literally thousands and thousands of people. Um, and that is very powerful. Um, when we raise our voice, it's not just one of us, it's all of us. Um, if folks want to um, answer some of these questions in the chat, um, and then we can um, start moving on with the end of our presentation. Lots of love for you, Sarah, in the chat. Um, someone shared that um, coal is cheap and abundant. Many gravitate towards low cost. That uh, is a problem we do have to think about. Um, but we'll I'll encourage you all to kind of think this over um, and um, think about how you can start um, building your story in a similar way. Um, next slide. Um, Sarah, I think this is you. Oh, that, the next slide. That was when I skipped. Okay, great. Um, yes, Roz, I love that comment. I actually smelled the sunshine. I totally resonate with that too. That was such a powerful story to hear from Sarah. So thanks so much for sharing that. Um, so yeah, next, my name is Catherine Lee. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm currently located in Western Michigan, land of the Potawatomi and Odawa. And I'm a senior online organizer for the Sierra Club. And I started this work because I knew that we needed to take bold action on climate change if we wanted to have a livable planet for all of us now. And I've seen that when we can wield our collective power together that we can make a change. So. Uh, yeah, right now I know that we've never had a better opportunity to pass the biggest climate bill we've ever seen. Uh, so that's why it's been so exciting to be here tonight and hear from so many of you that you feel the same way too. 
So next slide. Great, so yeah, now that we've learned about the story of us, the story of self, and the story of now, and we've heard from some, uh, some of those stories and had a chance to practice, where could you imagine sharing your story? Who would you tell your story to? So add in the chat the answer to those questions. Where would you share your story and who would you be telling it to? Mansion, that's great. <laughs> that would be a good one to tell your story to, Roz. Yeah, senators in West Virginia, definitely. Healthcare professionals, letters to elected officials. These are all great answers. Uh, so next slide. So yes, there's many places where we can be sharing our stories and this is all taking part in the collective action. So one of these places is in a lobby visit as we mentioned. When you're meeting with an elected official, this is a great way to kick off um, a meeting and connect with the representative. Just like Sarah shared, you can connect with a, the place that you live. You might have a shared um, experience with the elected official. Um, they can get to know you while you're there to talk about the issue and why it's important to their constituents. So you can start off the meeting this way, uh, talk about why it's important to the bill or the package and why it's important to you, your community and the Sierra Club. And if you want to uh, take part in a lobby visit, you can go to sc.org slash lobby to sign up for a lobby visit. Um, another place is in an action party. So some of you might be hosting action parties or attending action parties this August. A great way to begin the action party is to share your story. And uh, you might not know everyone at your action party, or maybe you do, but maybe you've never had an opportunity to talk about why this issue is important to you. Um, this can include the story of us. So why is it important that everyone's there to take action together? So whether you're leading a video call, an art creative, an art or creative action, you're hosting a group letter writing event, you can include uh, your story in one of your events. So if you, yeah, if you want to um, host an action party or attend one, you can go to sc.org slash action party. And we're dropping these links in the chat too, so you can follow along and click the links as we're going through. Um, another place it would be on social media. So if you think that everyone, that you're an influencer to everyone that's following you, um, this is a really powerful place to tell your personal story to your friends and family and other folks that might be following you. Um, so you feel free to share your story on social media now. And in two weeks, the final training of our series, we will be hosting a social media training. So be sure to sign up for that if you want to learn more about social media, but you could, don't wait, <laughs> don't wait to do that. You can uh, definitely share that out now. Um, and if you want to sign up for our future trainings, click the link um, in the chat, sc.org slash trainings there. Um, and then, yeah, with your friends and family, this is a great opportunity to talk about why this is so important to you. I know Sarah's story really resonated with me more so than just hearing the facts of uh, mountaintop removing, for example. So if you can connect with your friends and family, many of whom have probably have shared experiences of locations of um, things like that, you can have a lot more um, personal connection to persuade people along. And it makes a really dif a big difference to have that personal connection and share your story uh, there than just the straight facts um, with, with us. So we want to hear why our members, supporters, activists, why are you, uh, why do you care about the, this work and our priorities? Uh, I've loved to hear everyone's story tonight. It's been really powerful to see in the chat, the different stories that we're hearing. And so imagine if we could share our stories to the rest of Sierra Club followers, whether it's our social media, where we have thousands of followers that we can be able to uh, reach more people with the stories that are so important that you all have. Um, so for example, we can share a story and 
try to reach uh, the Senator Manchin in West Virginia by uh, I'm talking from Sierra Club there. So to do that, you can go to the link. Um, we'll put it in the chat, but you can submit photos, your story to the Sierra Club, and then we can share that out on our end there. Um, so that's sc.org slash share your picture. Um, a couple more here. So art, if you're creative, this is a really great way to share your uh, what, what matters to you. Um, and we'll, we're also doing a training next Tuesday to talk more about creative opportunities to take action. But yeah, if you are someone who expresses themselves creatively, your story can come through that way. Um, personalizing action alerts. So if you're signing an online petition, make sure to add a special like a comment and a story to be able to make your comment stand out more so than just adding your name and your signature. If you add your story and personalize it, that makes a big difference to your target and your elected official. And final one to go through is sharing in the media. So if you are attending or hosting or writing a letter to the editor uh, action party, this really makes uh, those letter to the editors or an op-ed stand out more so than just sharing the facts. They're much more likely to be featured in the local newspaper if there is that personalized story that can connect with their readers and um, connect that way. Um, so yeah, these are just a few. There's, I'm sure there's many other places to share your story. So we can go to the next slide. Great, so yeah, after hearing from this, um, would love to hear from all of you in the chat. Where are you planning to share your story? What are you planning to do uh, during this August recess to get your story out there? So feel free to add that in the chat so we can see where you're planning to use your personalized story. That's a great idea, a video on YouTube, Bill, that's awesome. A lobby meeting, Rachel, awesome, great. Senators and op-ed in the Seattle Times, awesome. These are all awesome. So yeah, we can go ahead to the next slide. Feel free to continue to add um, the chat there where you're gonna share and we'll pass it back to Liz. Great, thank you so much, Catherine, and um, all of our speakers so far. If you would like to um, celebrate what those folks have been doing and just give some claps, you can do that with exclamation marks in the chat. And I just wanted to appreciate not just our speakers, but everyone who's been contributing in our chat, um, sharing their ideas and thoughts in the chat. It's been really great seeing folks um, get inspired through this training, but also um, inspired by and with one another. So thank you very much for joining again. And I wanna um, ask you to um, join us for the summer of collective action. Many of you um, are already doing this. Some of you mentioned this earlier that um, you are um, already planning to um, find or join a, or lead a lobbying event um, or find or join or take part in an action party. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and drop those links uh, in the chat. And I wanna ask you to, um, if you haven't done that yet, to go ahead and do that. And if you have done that, even you can still click on the map and take a look at what's going on in your local area. And then we also have some resources. So um, we have uh, a number of different toolkits and ways that you can um, connect to things that you might already know. And then also some of our new tips and tricks for uh, managing in virtual times and also to be sure to stay safe um, as we're still navigating um, some of the aftershocks and uh, ripples of our COVID um, um, health issues. So um, wanted to just remind you all that this is still an important month to get involved and to ask others to get involved. And that might be a really good way for you to be able to use your story is to ask people to join you in doing these activities. So next slide. Um, we are um, actually a little bit uh, well early um, this 
this tonight. Um, and so uh, we can stay on um, for those who might have other questions or things that they want to share. But I think for this evening, what we'll do is just let you know a little bit more about our upcoming training, Creative Activism, Make Your Advocacy Sparkle and Shine. So if you haven't had a chance to sign up for that, please go ahead and do so. Once again, a reminder, if you um, missed our Climate Justice, Equity in the Sierra Club or Lobbying for Change trainings, those are available online. Um, and we'll make sure that all of the links are going to uh, work. Um, otherwise, uh, let's go to the next slide. Um, I wanted to let you know about a way that we're trying to continue to stay um, coordinated and um, building community. And that's by um, having folks join um, our Slack channel. So some of you are saying that maybe you don't use social media. Slack is a way of being able to um, stay connected just in time and with your phone. Um, and you can do that um, if you follow the instructions here. So um, you can both email for questions at mobilize.support at sierraclub.org, or you can just um, go to sc.org backslash slack and sign up and then um, get involved. So um, clicking on the link that's in this chat will um, take you there right now. Um, and so uh, last slide. Once again, um, I wanna thank folks who uh, joined us for the first time, folks who've joined us for maybe the second or third time, and all of your um, efforts are so important to help us to um, build back better. And um, if there are any questions, folks have particular thoughts or um, concerns,